We're getting close to the end of the war. There came a date. Uh, we moved our uh, two heavy bomb groups, 307th and 5th, up to uh, one on Leyte and one on Samar. And there was just a, a bay in between them, easy to cross. And uh, the officers of both of them got together and they built themselves an officers club. One of the rules I had made was officers couldn't use enlisted personnel to do manual labor, to do things, to build things for them. If the officers wanted them, they had to build them themselves. So they built this officers club and they sent an invitation down to General Matheny <coughs> To General Matheny to bring his general staff up to the opening of their newly built officers club. And uh, so there were about six or seven of us flew up there for that purpose for a day or two of rest and relaxation. There was going to be a dance that night. I don't remember who provided the music. And uh, I was the youngest, I was the kid of the group. And the last one to be able to select one of the rare females around. A couple of nurses, a couple of Australian nurses, uh, a Navy nurse. I fell heir to her company for the dance. She was old enough to be my mother. Uh, <clears throat> on the island of uh, Samar, a town called Takloban. The houses were built on stilts, and under the stilts they were raising pigs and chickens. That's where I was when peace was declared with Japan, when, the, when Japan surrendered. And uh, I immediately had orders issued uh, sending me back to the States. I was one of the general staff chiefs that uh, General Matheny had asked us after VE Day when uh, we could have qualified to go home. Maybe I could have, but he had, we had such a good, comprehensive, well-coordinated staff that he asked us all to stay for the duration. But as soon as VJ Day was announced, I'm not waiting any longer. I'm going to go home and get together with my kids and my wife. And uh, I thought I was going to fly back. Now, that was a letdown. Uh, another order came out announcing no more aircraft flights back to the States. Every aircraft of any kind, including Logan Airlines, were needed to uh, fly uh, people into Japan and take over the headquarters of the surrendered Japanese. So I had to go by ship. Took 23 days <laughs> from Tacloban to, uh, uh, I thought we were heading to San Francisco, but as we were, uh, had gone by Hawaii, uh, our route was changed to Seattle. And from Seattle, there were, I think it was nine railroad cars of GIs from uh, overseas, various stations, returned to the States and heading for uh, a big base just outside of Chicago, Jefferson Barracks, I think it was, maybe something else maybe, but anyway, I was a senior officer on that train, and that, that made me the train commander. I had to be on duty for the, entire, for the entire duty, a lot of which was spent on sidings while regular scheduled freight and passenger trains uh, went by. And, uh, <clears throat> but eventually, I. I got to uh, that station out there and I got myself turned loose. I headed for 
Michigan. My folks at this time were in the town of Fountain. I didn't let them know I was coming because I didn't know when I'd get there. And uh, my last trip from Ludington, about 32, 35 miles, something like that, to Fountain, I had to hitchhike part of that way. And when I got to Fountain, went into the store, went up the back stairs, and uh, my wife was ironing in uh, the living room, ironing board set up. What a happy reunion we had. <laughs>